Now, to, to wrap things up today, the last topic that I want to talk about, and then we'll turn more to uh, the rest of the questions that are out there, is I want to talk about item type last valid value. Because I think there's a lot of confusion out there as to what this is, why I use it, when I use it. So let's talk about that a little bit. Now, why is last valid value important? Well, it's important because we need to have accurate item type property values available to us, even when we're in situations where they can't properly be evaluated. Like maybe I'm opening it up in MicroStation and it can't evaluate a civil expression like a, a station computation. Or I'm opening this up or publishing it to an iTwin and that publishing engine is running in a, a network environment through the project-wise process. And maybe it doesn't have everything available. Maybe it doesn't have your lookup table, your Excel file. So it doesn't know where to go get that value from. How do we preserve that data? And that's done through this concept of last valid value. So let's dig into this a little bit deeper. Think about when is an item type expression evaluated? So when does it actually evaluate? Well, it doesn't happen all the time. Item type expressions only evaluate when you touch an item and it kind of pops up in the properties dialog. That's the easy way to think about it is if you go select an item and you see it in properties, those values are being evaluated instantaneously as it's opening up that or showing those properties in the properties dialog. They were not evaluated before that. They do also get evaluated when we publish to iTwin and, and do reports. There's a few other situations, but the easy way to think about it is if you haven't brought it up in properties and looked at it, it hasn't reevaluated that item type, so it could potentially be out of date. So what happens if the expression does not evaluate? Well, that's when this last valid value kicks in. If it's enabled and used, then the stored on the element is its last valid value, and that's what will be shown. If last valid value is disabled, what will happen is the expression will fail. Um, let's say it's trying to do a lookup from a spreadsheet and the spreadsheet's not there. It'll reach out and try to do the lookup, says can't find it, and it'll show some sort of an error in there saying, I can't find any data to show you here, so here's an error. Um, that's not really what you want to see. You would rather see the, the at least the best data that you had. So it's very important that you, in your production environment, run with last valid value set to true. One thing that I, I want to kind of point out here, too, is there is a desire. There's another option in there called failure value. If I back up a slide here, right below it here is also a failure value. And you can put a value in here. And you see people want to do that sometimes. You know, I want to put a value in of error something or some number in there to give you an indication that it failed. The big thing to understand here is you cannot use last valid value true and failure value at the same time. They're mutually exclusive. So if you add a failure value, it will automatically set last valid value to false. So the, the root of that is you need to use last valid value and set it to true, which means you cannot use failure value. And that's the way you really want to operate in your production environment. Now, Failure values are very useful to use while you're building your expressions and getting them working. Absolutely encourage you to use them there. You don't need last valid values, not that important there. You're in a, a building, setup, testing environment. Use your failure values. And then when you go to production, get rid of those and set the last valid value as true. Now let's talk a little bit more about this last valid value and when it is stored. And I said before, it's when an element's selected, kind of like when it displays in the properties window, right? Now, I want you to think for a minute about civil ruled elements. So let's say you've got a, an edge of pavement that is an offset from your center line. And that edge of pavement has some item type on it that's got some values that are being computed, maybe offset values or coordinates or something. And your center line 
pavement changes. Maybe you change the radius of a curve a little bit. So that offset geometry automatically changes a little bit. The item type is not automatically reevaluated. Now remember, that item type could have also been working across reference files. So that thing that changed may have even been in a reference somewhere. Now those positions of those elements are always going to be updating, but we're not always updating the item type properties in there. There would be a lot of overhead in listening for all of those all the time of all the possible things that could be happening there. So the fact is, you, you got to understand that some of those item types at any point in time in those files could and will probably be out of date if some other things that are based on have changed. So what have we done so that your data is not out of date? There is a process that runs that updates when you close a file it runs through every element in the file even if you haven't touched it even if you haven't done anything with it and it checks it to see if that item type is up to date or not and if it's not it updates it. so by the time you close the file then all of those last valid values are getting refreshed and are always up to date for you now that's only going to happen if you're running an open site open roads open rail designer so that is a good thing because that's what keeps all of your stuff up to date. And we strongly recommend you use that. I will also tell you in the very soon to be released 22R2 that we have made some very significant speed increases here. This functionality has been in the software for about a year, but we've seen in some very large file instances where it could take two or three, four minutes for some files to close. So we've made some very substantial speed increases. Don't think you're gonna see really any files that take more than 10 or 15 seconds at this point to close and do all that up. I will though share with you that there is a way to disable that. Don't recommend you do it, but if you absolutely do not want that happening, there is a configuration variable that you can set and set this to false, and it will disable that happen. If you do choose to do that and disable it, and you need to refresh those item types you know, because you're going to share it to a MicroStation user or you're going to take it to an iTwin or something, we do also deliver a VB macro called item types LKG. This is delivered as part of our example workspace. And this macro will also go through and do the updates on the files. So you, you do have another option. I'd encourage you to use the built-in functionality and let it just happen every time you close the files. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.